Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about sympatric versus allopatric speciation and we're going to relate this information on, and apply it. We're going to take this information and also apply it to the biological species concept. Okay, so allopatric speciation. So the most notable feature of allopatric speciation is the presence of a geographic barrier, all right? That is what is going to tell us that allopatric speciation has occurred instead of sympatric, which we will get into in a bit. So if we start off with that green circle on the left, our original population, and at some point in time, a geographic barrier presents itself, splitting the two into two groups now, right? With time, now we're at the third picture there, on the, the second from the right, the reproductive isolation. That's what occurs next. So what that means is these two groups have been isolated um, and now they are reproducing on their own. They're not intermingling with one another, right? So they are changing genetically now as time progresses and their progeny are becoming different from one another. And if you were to remove that geographic barrier, you were dealing with two species now. If successful speciation has occurred, then yes, you will have two separate species, as noted by the green circle and the blue circle on the very right. So an example of this would be, uh, let's say we have some frogs that were roaming around in their habitat, and due to urbanization, uh, humans built a highway that goes straight through their habitat, and now they're split up into two groups of the same frog from the beginning, right? They have the geographic barrier, and then they begin to reproduce on their own. They don't, they don't have a way to mingle with one another because this big highway is in the way. And with time, maybe if you were to compare the two frogs, they, they end up being two separate species. The, the second group, on, for example, the blue group that we will represent by one of the groups of the frogs, those will become a, a whole different frog now compared to the first group. So moving on to sympatric speciation. Now this does not involve uh, a geographic barrier. This is just where isolation occurs within a population and then speciation occurs there. So if we were to take an example, uh, we could think of the hawthorn fly as a really good example of this. So basically, let's say we have the hawthorn fly population that normally feeds on apples, red apples in particular. But the two different types of apples that are present in the area are red and green. However, they do not normally feed on the green. Let's say at some point in time, some of the hawthorn flies do end up feeding on the green and they continue to feed on the green apples. Uh, and their progeny feed on the green and they start to just accumulate more uh, of a difference between the flies that feed on the red apples versus the flies that feed on a green apple. And so with time, they have isolated themselves. Uh, and so sympatric speciation has occurred because uh, the interactions between these two groups now are so limited based on their feeding patterns that they no longer mate with each other. So now they have now you have two separate species within the same region. Okay, moving on to the biological species concept. So this idea states that two members of the population of a species can interbreed and produce a fertile offspring, right? So I mentioned earlier that when successful speciation occurs, you end up with two distinct species. But how can we know for sure, right? How do we know that these are two separate species and not just two different populations of the same species, right? So if we take our frog example again, and we work it with this definition here that I just gave for the biological species concept, if we were to take the two groups of frogs that were separated by the highway and try to make them interbreed. And if they were to successfully interbreed and create fertile offspring, then they are in fact still the same species. They're just two different, they're just two populations of the same species. But 
On the other hand, if we were to take these frogs from both sides of the highway and try to make them interbreed, and they do not produce a fertile offspring, then these two groups are in fact two distinct species. They are not just two populations of the same species anymore. So that is the end of today's lesson. Uh, be sure to like and comment on this video and subscribe for more videos. Uh, Brain Boost is obviously very open to hearing new ideas and any questions that you have on today's video, we'll be sure to answer you guys.